In this video, we're going over an at-home banded workout for hockey players. All right, what's going on guys? Kyle here from Relentless Hockey, and today I'm gonna to walk you through one of my favorite workouts that hockey players can be doing with just bands. So, so many of my players now have bands in their hockey bags, and they're traveling with them nonstop because not only are they an amazing tool to work some activation stuff, whether it's pre-practice or pre-game, but you can get in a full strength workout with just bands. So today we're gonna to go over a sequence that you can use, a complete workout that you could use to challenge not only your functional strength and core, but also some power development. So I love these bands because they come in different intentions. So we really want to make sure we're not just using a red band, but we're also not using a purple band that's just going to absolutely beg us and not be able to do the movements properly. All right, so we're going to dive into our A block, and this is going to be three exercises back to back to back, no rest. We want to make sure that we're minimizing that rest time in between, but then taking around 30 to 60 seconds at the end of that sequence to kind of recharge the batteries and then dive in again. So our first exercise, we're going to be using our purple band. If you're a younger player, you could be using our red, red band, but we're going to be focusing on a split squat. So I'm going to get this band underneath of my foot and then I'm also going to have a bit of a curl up here into a front rack position. So again, I don't want to make sure that I'm twerking my wrist or anything like this, but I'm getting into a position where I'm nice and strong and then I'm in a split squat. So for our split squat, we want to make sure that we're coming perfectly down and then driving up as much as possible. So I'm staying nice and controlled on the way down. As I'm down here, the, I have the least amount of tension, right? So I want to make sure that I'm in a perfect position. I've loaded up into my glute and then I'm firing up as much as possible. So we're going to use this exercise for eight reps per side and really making sure that we're getting in that power. All right, so our next exercise, we're gonna be using our red band and it is a banded push-up. So this is an awesome exercise to really begin to develop those push space muscles without having to do just a ton of push-ups. This is actually gonna create that muscle tension that's really gonna to start to develop some actual functional strength and power. So I'm gonna get it looped up in one hand. I'm gonna go around my back, get it looped up into my other hand. I wanna make sure it's not coming up into my neck or anything like that. It's right across my back. And then all I'm gonna do is get set up in a classic push-up position it's going to get easier on the way down and then I'm, once I'm down here I'm going to fire as aggressively as possible right back up so controlling on the way down and then once we're hitting the bottom we're pausing for a half second and then exploding back up so we really want to make sure that we're keeping this between 8 and 12 reps and focusing on generating as much power as we can if this feels too easy you can either add a purple band or go slower on the way down all right so our next exercise we're going to need some sort of pull so you could also find like a door hook they call them banded uh, door hooks on Amazon that you could actually hook it up to your door but in my case I'm going to use a pole you could also use a basement pole anywhere you, where you can hook the band and so we are going to J hook this so we're gonna come around and then through and now I have a nice band where I can pull on it so I'm basically gonna be using a slap shot style motion here I'm gonna be going from all the way up top to right down across my hip and I want to make sure that I'm staying super locked in with my core so this is an exercise that's challenging that core stability and challenging that those rotator muscles while staying as braced as possible but we really want to make sure that we are creating an explosive torque down into the ground and then releasing nice and slow and controlling. You're gonna to wanna to do this for around eight to 12 reps and really make sure that you're dialed in with your movement mechanics. All right, so I know this is supposed to be an all band workout, but I wanna throw in one of my favorite body weight exercises for hockey players to really challenge their entire full body stability and it's an amazing core exercise. So we're calling this one the activated bird dog. So you might've seen the typical bird dog in the past where we're down on all fours and we just have that reach out and we hold and that's an amazing exercise. But we find with hockey players, they're so strong through their core that it gets easy fairly quick. So this activated version, I'm in this kind of quad position, I'm lifting off my knees, and then I'm reaching out as far as I can, and then I'm going back. So if you find this one a little bit too challenging, you can of course do your knees down version, and it's going to be super helpful. We want to do this for anywhere between 10 and 12 reps. All right, guys, so that was our A block. We want to make sure we're going through this through at least three times and making sure that we're really pushing the pace. We're going to jump into our B block now, and it's a little bit more strength focused, so we really want to make sure that we're getting braced the entire time. We don't want to sacrifice movement quality here, and the band starts to get a little bit more challenging. So we really want to make sure we're dialed in with our movement mechanics. Our first one here is going to be our banded RDL or our straight leg deadlift. I'm going to be using a purple band here. Again, if you wanted to go lighter or heavier, you absolutely could. I'm going to be stepping into this band, so making sure that it's directly in my feet. We see players that if they misstep it, it's going to fire up, so make sure you're in a nice strong position. And then once I'm in here, I'm focusing on my hip hinge. So I'm in a position where I'm firing my hips forward as much as I can. So this means I'm not rounding. There's no kind of torque either in my back either way. I'm getting locked in that position and I'm staying in that position. So I'm getting low and loaded here and then I'm firing my hips up and I'm coming right back down. So this isn't a straight up and down movement. This is actually, I'm focusing on how fast I can fire my hips forward and then coming right back down 
and controlling it as much as possible. So this is an exercise that is so valuable for hockey players because we're challenging those glutes and really firing as much as we can, which is gonna translate directly on the ice. All right, guys, we're gonna be doing another exercise where we're gonna be hooking that band right through a pole, but this time a little bit lower. So we're gonna be doing an exercise called the Cossack Squat to Paloff Press. And this is a high level exercise that's super valuable for hockey players. We wanna make sure this is probably around belly button height. And then I'm, I'm already creating my tension. So I wanna make sure that it's not loose right away, but it's not too tight. I have some sort of tension in there. And then I'm gonna be stepping away from it so I'm getting into this low lunge position and then I'm making a press straight out and back. So as you can see, as I'm getting into my low position, I have this kind of torque demand on back. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting super strong, I'm getting super braced in this low hip position, which is insanely valuable for hockey players, right? This is basically gonna challenge all of the muscles that it lets you get super strong in the puck and make sure that you're never getting knocked off. So we wanna make sure we're doing this anywhere between 10 and 12 reps and really getting strong in that bottom position so that you're not getting bounced off the puck. All right, so another exercise that's not a band exercise, but I find so valuable for hockey players that it's in almost every one of my programs. So we wanna make sure that we're getting low and loaded right now, getting in an athletic position, and now we're gonna do our lawn bowlers. So I'm gonna be reaching out as far across my body as possible, really making sure that I'm nice, strong, and stable. And I'm trying to purposely get out of balance a little bit by seeing how far I can reach out. So it's actually good. If you feel that you're only getting there and you're not being challenged, you're not doing it right. Make sure that you are having that challenge here where you start to feel a little bit wobbly, you're pushing yourself to find that stability element that you're trying to get better every single rep. So you're gonna do this for eight reps per leg and really make sure that you're getting out as much reach as possible. All right guys, so our last exercise, we're back using a pull. We're gonna be doing a banded dead bug. So this is an awesome body weight exercise, but we're gonna take it to the next level by really challenging that core with our band today. So I'm gonna hook it now super low and I actually don't have to J hook it or anything. I'm gonna use both sides here and as I, get set up, I'm gonna make sure that I am nice and flat, and then I'm gonna be starting by squeezing my back down. So I wanna make sure that there's no space here between my ribs or my low back and the ground. So I'm, I'm intentionally kind of pushing those ribs into the ground. I'm gonna take my band in either side of my hands, create some tension to really create that squeeze down, and then I'm reaching my leg out as far as I can, only one at a time. So as I naturally reach out, my back wants to pop up, my ribs wanna pop up, and so the entire point of this exercise is to really be forcing those ribs down, really getting in that brace position, and fighting it so that you're nice and strong the entire time. So this is the perfect exercise to begin to challenge those anti-extension muscles, which are so valuable for hockey players. Anytime you're coming up against a big hit or you're fighting off some contact, you're in that anti-extension position. You wanna make sure that you're not getting open up because then you're gonna get off balance. So we're trying to find that low lock position where we're able to stay as strong and stable through our low back and our mid back as possible. So this is an exercise you're gonna to wanna to do a lot of. We wanna make sure that we're doing it around 15 to all the way up to 20 reps and really staying braced through our core. Your abs should be on fire by the end of this exercise. All right guys, so that is a awesome workout that hockey players can be doing to get stronger, both functionally stronger, improve their core strength, develop some power. It's one of those all around workouts that hockey players can get a lot of value from. So a lot of players, they're sleeping on bands. They know that they need to be in the gym, they need to be getting stronger, but bands are an awesome tool to really eliminate any restrictions to working out. Whether you're stuck at home, you're on the road, you're at the cottage, wherever you're at, you should be able to throw this in your hockey bag, throw this in your backpack, and be able to get in an incredible strength-based workout. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, we have some amazing band programs over at relentlesshockey.com and way more training articles and videos to really help all of our hockey players take their game to the next level. Get out there and get relentless.